Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at the very simple but core theory of mixing materials together in Blender. Now using this technique you can create and make any material you want and mix them together however you want. So there have been different tutorials that I've made on water and sand and everything but I thought I'd make just one core clear video explaining the theory behind it. So you can go ahead and use this however you want without having to follow specific tutorials. So what we're going to do is we're just going to split the viewport in half and make the right side a shader editor just so we can see what's going on quite easily and we've got our default material here which is a principled bsdf and we're just going to change the base color to be red just so we can see what's going on actually let's switch to the material preview so we can see that more clearly and we're just going to duplicate that with shift d and make a secondary one which is going to be blue this is all just as an example so we can see quite clearly when we're mixing between the two colors where is the red and, and uh, where is the blue we plug both these in, obviously we're only seeing one at a time. But how do we mix them together? Well, it's very, very simple. We're going to use this shader node called Mix Shader, which sounds obvious, but that is literally all it is. We're going to plug our two separate materials into the shader inputs and plug the shader output into the surface. And there you go. You'll see now if we move the factor value up and down, we're going between the red and the blue. Obviously, if it's in the middle, we're going to get a purple because red and blue mixed is purple. And that's how you can sort of blend two materials together. But this is obviously only mixing between 100% blue and 100% red, which is okay if you want to do something like that with your two materials. But what if we want to have the materials separated on the same object? Well, for an example here, we're just going to switch the colors to be a white and brown. For example, if we were sort of applying mud to a texture. And what you can do is just add a texture node in. And this can be any texture you want. For this example, we're just going to use Musgrave and we're going to add that in and plug that height from the Musgrave into the factor. And I'm just going to move this over here so we can see the nodes a bit better. And lastly, we're just going to add a converter and color ramp to give us a bit more control. And this is really it. This is the core fundamentals of it. What you can see now is if we squish the white and black values up, we can really define where the brown from the mud is coming through and where the white on the base is there. And if you change the settings on the Musgrave, you can really refine what's going on. So to sort of explain what's happening is basically the Musgrave texture is acting as the mask. And that is basically what's masking between the brown and the white. Further, if we press Control T on the Musgrave texture and we bring up a mapping node, you can get even further control. You can change the rotation of the texture, the scale, the location, and that will move the mask around. So just to summarize, this Musgrave texture is basically our mask and we're using the mapping node and that color ramp to sort of just go in and refine how we want the mask to be. If we bring the black and white values up further one way, sort of crushing the brown further down. If we go the other way, we're bringing more of the brown into it. Another cool thing we can do actually, instead of it just being black and white, which is sort of 100% and zero, if we move the white down to a gray, we're basically overlapping the white onto the brown and vice versa. If we bring the black value up to a, to a white, what you're doing is you're keeping the full color of the brown texture, but you're also overlapping that onto the white. So it doesn't have to be one or the other split, you can overlap them. Now in summary, if we get rid of all those extra bits, all we're doing is basically mixing our material one and material two into the shaders of the mix, and then adding another texture to act as the mask, which we're plugging into the factor. And that's pretty much it. That's the core theory. Just make sure you're using your two shaders and a texture in the factor. And there you go, you've got your mask. Thanks so much for watching. If this was helpful, please leave a like, subscribe for more Blender content like this.